In this ninth masterclass on Zizek's philosophy, we are going to be focusing on one of Zizek's core uh, theoretical um, figures, Jacques Lacan. However, before going into an in-depth analysis of Jacques Lacan, I want to let you know about a masterclass on the Freudian unconscious, which I'll be leading, starts June 3rd. In this masterclass, we are going to be trying to understand and integrate the meaning of the unconscious for our personal and professional lives. There's more information in the link in the description, and I hope that you'll reach out to me if you're interested in this work. Now focusing on Jacques Lacan and Zizek's use of this figure. For Zizek, he sees psychoanalysis as fundamentally a 20th century form of knowledge which helps us to bridge with what emerged in German idealism in the 19th century. This is done because in psychoanalysis, with the discovery of the unconscious, we are able to go deeper into the thing in itself by understanding the very structure of the unconscious as a narrative or a form of language. This discovery of the unconscious as a autonomous form of language, or as Freud said, a repetition automatism, means that the subject or the ego is fundamentally decentered. Decentered in relationship to a structure of knowledge, a structure of linguistic knowledge, which it does not fully know and does not fully understand and has not fully integrated. This means that fundamentally the subject is not the ruler or the master of its own house, but needs to be humble to approach this unknown dimension of itself. In this process, the emergence of psychoanalysis as a knowledge process, Lacan stays true and stays faithful to this Freudian discovery and attempts to work through the Freudian discovery with structural linguistics and with other forms of 20th century knowledge, which Freud did not have access to. Zizek sees this motion of the Lacanian form of psychoanalysis as a true repetition of the Freudian discovery, which brings out new dimensions of the unconscious for us to reflect on in 21st century philosophy. During the time of Lacan's career, he often positioned himself and framed himself as a anti-philosopher. What this meant was that Lacan understood that the discovery that Freud made of the unconscious fundamentally went against some of the presuppositions of philosophy throughout all of history of what the self is. Of course, Freud was aware of this, but Lacan even deepened his understanding of how uh, wrong philosophical presuppositions of the self were in regards to this decentered nature. For philosophers before the discovery of psychoanalysis, the self was seen as sort of like a central substantial ego, which was self-transparent, which had a knowledge structure, which it understood fully. However, with the discovery of the unconscious and with the discovery of a structure of language which was unaware uh, to the ego, this meant that the subject was decentered, decentered internally, decentered in relationship to its own knowledge practices. This also uh, introduces the idea that the subject is fundamentally a libidinal historical entity, which often never appears in uh, pre psychoanalytic philosophical writings or even post uh, psychoanalytic writings in figures like Heidegger. However, at the same time, even though Lacan positions himself as an anti-philosopher, Lacan also frequently engages with philosophy, frequently engages with figures like Plato, Descartes, Kant, Hegel, and Heidegger, and in some sense tries to rethink these philosophical figures with the discoveries of psychoanalysis. This offers us this psychoanalytic retroactive understanding of philosophy to make new sense of what it means to both attain and work with absolute knowing. When a subject has attained and integrated with absolute knowing, what this means is, is that the subject has integrated or started to integrate with its unconscious knowledge, its own decentered core. This according to Lacanian psychoanalysis, 
brings us to not a end or not a closure, but rather a mystery of desire. This mystery of desire and this location of the absolute in a becoming can be worked with, can be further developed by focusing on internal paradoxes, internal knots, and internal contradictions. What this means is that when the self has located its own internal paradoxes, its own internal knots, and its own internal contradictions in regards to its most fundamental desire, this working through in the symbolic structure is the location of pushing the absolute further, of expanding the absolute. In this sense, Zizek often uses um, metaphors of a alien inhuman core as the true realm of the subject's becoming. In other words, for Zizek, the true subject's becoming is not the external outside, and it is not the self-transparent ego, but rather it is this decentered core within itself, what is often referred to as an extimate core, which is alien to the subject, and which is first experienced by the subject as a radical otherness. Of course, in the process of working through paradoxes, knots, and contradictions, the subject can become more aware of this alien inhuman core core and can transform itself radically in relationship to this becoming. Ultimately then, what Zizek is concerned with by using Jacques Lacan is to deconstruct and negate false masters, masters who would try to tell us what the world is in itself, or masters who would try to convince us that they are self-transparent, that they are a substantial ego, which is fully aware of its own knowledge. What the discovery of the psychoanalysis and the discovery of the unconscious means is that in order to truly emancipate oneself, one has to align oneself with the core of one's unconscious desire. And one, when do, one does this, opens oneself into a confrontation with an unconscious truth which is difficult, which is difficult fundamentally to integrate into one's everyday persona. This is because the unconscious is in some sense incompatible with our social and physical reality the unconscious as a wish fulfillment has no room for otherness has no room for um uh any constraints or forces that would prevent its opening and that would prevent its yes fundamentally its affirmation as Zizek has said the unconscious knows no no and this form, this force of the unconscious is a type of language, is structured like a language, and in Zizek's philosophy is often referred to as an inhuman vision and voice, a vision and a voice in images and symbols which have a desire of their own and which fundamentally move the subject uh, independent of the ego's will or independent of the ego's desires. And in that sense, the true master is nothing but the unconscious form of knowledge itself. And connected to that, I would like to also remind you that on June 3rd, I will be leading a masterclass on the Freudian unconscious where we're going to be trying to better understand the meaning of this discovery for our own personal and professional lives. You'll have a chance to work with me one-on-one -on -one and we'll go through very clear and very intuitive models that help you to understand and integrate this knowledge for whatever it is you're going through. There's a link in the description with more information, and if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to me and I'll try to answer you within the day. And that was this episode or lecture on the Freudian on Zizek's masterclass focused on Jacques Lacan and the way in which Zizek uses Lacan in his philosophical edifice.